Let's talk about ganglia and an introduction to what the sympathetic ganglia look like, how they are arranged, and all of that. So we're going to look at the sympathetic nervous system. So here you have your ventral root horns. Here you have your dorsal horns. Here we have our lateral horns, which tells me that this lateral horns, which tells me that this vertebra is between T1 and L2. Then here we have our dorsal root, ventral root. Here's our dorsal root ganglia. They combine to form the spinal trunk, spinal, well, trunk of spinal nerve, trunk of spinal nerve. Here would be your dorsal ramus or branch of spinal nerve. Here would be your ventral ramus or branch of spinal nerve. And here would be your white ramus communicans, white ramus communicans, and here would be your grey ramus communicans. This is our sympathetic ganglion. Now, the neuron that leaves the spinal cord enters the sympathetic ganglion via these communicants. It will tend to enter via the white ramus communicants and leave via the grey ramus communicants. And that's kind of like the normal way. Yeah. That's called synapsing at the same level. If it synapses within the same ganglion and leaves, comes through, enters via white ramus and leaves via grey ramus, that makes it essentially synapsing on the same level. Now, it can take a couple of different routes. It can either ascend to the next sympathetic ganglion or descend to the next one, to the previous one and de descend to the next one. And when it ascends or descends, it basically, for example, if it was this red one, it would have come in by the white ramus communicants, but not synapsed. Well, it would have synapsed, but then went along to a different one. Okay, that's not at the same level. Well, it synapses on the same level, but it grows to a different level. So that's the one. The other situation is it can ascend or descend. Now, the other thing that it can do is it can form, instead of synapsing with a nerve inside, it can form another nerve entirely and leave. That's not a good color. It can go out the sympathetic ganglion via another nerve entirely and these are called horn nerves or splanchnic nerves what do splanchnic nerves do they for example this is a ganglion they will come in and they will sign up Instead of coming, they will come in where the white white ray might communicants, but they will just leave as their own splanchnic nerve. The other option is not to synapse or enter the ganglion in any way. 
This, by the way, was called the post ganglionic sphagnic nerve, meaning it does enter the rhema communicans, and only after it exits the ganglion does it become sphagnic, so on its own, like its own entity, like a kid leaving home at 18. Or like somebody leaving in their own car instead of going in the company car. They're like, okay, bye. Now, the other one is called the preganglionic splanchnic nerve. And this is going to come, it's not even going to come into the ganglia, really. It's just going to go like this. And it's not going to synapse at all. So it's just going to be pre-ganglionic splanchnic. I already knew that it was going on its own way, so it was pre. 